Hello, Blake Grudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today I want to teach you how to avoid those halo-y or contrasty edges that you'll get in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom when you're trying to process a landscape photo. So this is the landscape photo we're going to be looking at. Uh, if you look at the background here, we definitely want to expand the range and the dynamic range that we have in this image so we can see more of the foreground and the background. Uh, this is typically what we see or what I see during my critique sessions. I see a very strong halo-y or contrasty edge here. But today I'm going to show you how you can expand that dynamic range while keeping those edges beautiful. And this is going to be our final result here. It's kind of the best of both worlds. And I'm going to show you how to blend them so that they look gorgeous in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. All right, so I do get a lot of questions about avoiding halos, and I'm gonna give you a couple tips that will help you avoid halos and basically distracting areas where you go from high contrast to low contrast, and you get like a sharp edge, uh, especially landscape photos. You see this all the time. So what I have here are actually three different photos that I took. The first tip that I have for you is actually to, to shoot in a bracketed mode. So I like to shoot with a zero exposure, a negative two exposure, and a plus two exposure. On my Sony a7R III, I get a beautiful amount on a dynamic range that I can work with. That's the first tip to help avoiding halos because then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take these into Adobe Camera Raw, select them all, and then say merge to HDR right, like you see here, okay? So this is the HDR, this is the pre-cooked HDR image that we have here, and it looks pretty good to start. Uh, it looks like it automatically set up some settings for me, but I definitely take my images to a whole nother level when I'm working uh, with an HDR image that these basic settings just can't get me. First tip, do an HDR bracketed series. It's gonna give you the most range from the highlights to the shadows, okay? So let's just go ahead and drop these highlights a little bit more. I'm gonna drop the contrast just a little bit more here too, and you're gonna see why, and I'm gonna open up these shadows quite a bit here as well. I want this image to be just a basic low dynamic range shot because I know I've got more data up here in the sky, and I know that because if I bring this exposure down, look at how beautiful those clouds are in the background. But when that's just set to you know where it is here at zero, we don't quite see that. I can do that though if I go in with the adjustment brush. And this is typically where I see the most halos and distracting edges that are created. Because what we wanna do is we wanna make that top area a little bit darker. So I'm gonna bring this down and make that darker. Uh, typically what you see here is people hitting auto mask and then they come up here and they do this number and they brush this in. I'm gonna press Y so I can see that mask. And I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller so it doesn't select quite as much. And then there we go. Press Alt or Option. Make that a little bit smaller by pressing the left bracket key while holding Alt or Option so I don't get any of the uh, half dome here in this selection. And then again, just keep getting more of that until I get all of that top area done. Okay, that looks good. So that's typically what we would do here. And then we would drop the exposure down uh, to get that exposure we wanted it to. Maybe plus up these highlights just a little bit. Maybe uh, close down those shadows a little bit as well bring up some of the contrast there, and then maybe even hit some dehaze there to get some more uh, of the clouds out there. And that looks good. Maybe even come up here and manipulate the uh, temperature and the tint so I can get that beautiful morning glow that I wanted, <laughs> but didn't quite get. Okay, so here's the deal. Let's zoom in here and let's look at this. You see that there's a, there's a little edge there around the top of it, especially around the top of Half Dome that doesn't look good. We also will see that here uh, on the tops of the trees, it doesn't look good because the trees, if we press Y for our mask, some of them got selected as well. Now, I'm not gonna tell you not to get too worried about that right now. So that would be our selection for the background. Let's do a new brush and we'll do a selection for the foreground. And with the foreground, I'm gonna press Y so I can see that selection. Uh, and for this one, I'm gonna bring up my exposure a little bit. Let's just press plus 0.5 for now just to get that set up. And then I'm gonna brush in here with auto mask and I'm gonna brush in for the foreground. Okay, and this is typically what we would do uh, to separate foreground and background to separate the contrast in the two of them where we couldn't quite do that. I'm gonna take away this area that I oversprayed. Okay, and that looks pretty good there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Press Y, and now this is where I see a lot of issues, especially in my critique sessions where the high, the high contrast in the sky and then the low contrast in the foreground, and we get this really weird type of look. So we need to make these match first of all. So I'm gonna increase the contrast in the foreground a little bit, maybe even heighten up some of the highlights in the foreground a little bit, bring down some of those shadows just a little bit, maybe plus up those whites just a slight bit, 
and maybe offset the blue that we got going on there with a little bit of yellow. And that looks pretty good. So let's look at our two masks. I'll press Y. There's our first mask. There's our second mask. First mask, second mask. Now, this is the, the big tip that I have for avoiding these halos, okay? I want you to go here and take off auto mask. So I use, why did you do that, Blake? Well, check this out. We're going to go to this one, okay? And then I'm going to go to the erase mode. Alt or option will also get me into erase mode, but I want to press Y to see my mask, okay? And after I see my mask, I'll go into erase mode. I'll make my brush really big, and I'm talking really big, like this big, okay? Now, if you see here, the way this brush is set up, that center circle, that is where the most uh, energy is going to be from that brush or the most takeaway is going to be for that brush. That middle area that we have there that's in between the two circles, that's the feather. So we don't want to take this brush and hit right here to, to even this out. We want to just make sure that this is below so that our safe zone in order to uh, get this image to look good is going to be in that feathered area. I don't want to go here. I want to go in that feathered area, make sure that this circle doesn't go outside uh, of that area. So I'm just going to hit here, hit here, and I'm taking away right now because we're set to the erase mode. Okay, and I'm just going to hit just below there. If it's a little bit too big, make the brush a little bit smaller. And again, uh, auto mask is off. So really what we're doing here is we're just hitting the edges with this feathering edge. And I'm gonna feather it in. Notice how I transitioned and feathered it in, okay? So now when I press Y, look at the transition. It's a lot better. So I'll make this brush a little bit smaller here and do this especially for the rim of half dome there so that that doesn't get too much of that selection there. Make it a little bit bigger and feather that out, okay? Now I'll press Y. Now look at that, okay? It's looking a lot better. So we just feather this in and slowly feather this in until it starts to look more natural, okay? So we'll press Y, and there is our actual mask now. I'll go to this brush that I did here, and I'll go to the erase mode with Y, make that brush a little bit smaller, and then just brush away along the top edge here where that feather is, and that should help that transition as well. And look at that much more natural okay so this is how you avoid the haloing edges or that kind of uh, crunchy edge that you get especially when you're working in adobe camera raw now typically people ask me how do you do this in photoshop well the thing is is that these things need to be fixed basically at the raw level so what you're doing at the raw level by expanding that dynamic range so that you can bring it into Photoshop and work on it more, most of the issues happen at that raw processing level where things are taken a little bit too far in the raw processor before you go into Photoshop to fix up the effects a little bit. So now if we go to our overall before image, here is the overall before and the overall after. Let's go back to our brushes before and after the brushes. So really what we're doing is we're feathering that mask. The question might be, well, why wouldn't you use the graduated filter for that? You could definitely use the graduated filter for that as well, but the graduated filter is gonna be mechanical. And when I'm doing this, I use my hand to do that because it's less of a mechanical thing and more of a natural approach to it because I get to dictate where uh, that feathering edge is gonna be instead of using a mechanical approach. But you can try either way, whatever works for you. For one, shoot bracketed images to merge to HDR. Number two, expand that dynamic range out quite a bit before going into your local adjustment brushes. Number three, use your local adjustment brushes to separate the foreground and the background. And number four, use your local adjustment brush to feather the edge out with that eraser. Just feather the edge. That's all you need to do. And you can avoid those halos and contrast edges. So I certainly hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you like it, please comment on it, share it, and tell a friend, especially a friend that needs a little bit of help. This might be that gentle nudge that you give them. Hey, your photo looks great, but you might want to try this on those edges. All right, so thank you for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it.